Hi there, and thank you for watching this cabinet tutorial. My name is Beth, and I'm the owner of Farm Fresh Vintage Vines in Fairview, Tennessee. I'm a blogger, painter, DIYer, and a wannabe designer. The following tutorial is a mixture of several videos where I'll be teaching you how to paint your cabinets from start to finish. During the last 15 years as a professional painter, I have learned lots of tips and tricks to help you get the best result when painting your cabinets possible. We'll discuss the process starting with how to remove your cabinet doors and label them so you know where to put them back, which paint brands I prefer, and lastly, how to apply top coats. Now, let's get started. So the first and, in my opinion, most important step in painting your cabinets is the prep. Um, as with all the other tips in this video, these are my opinion. This is the way I do it. There are several different kinds of hinges used for cabinetry. The one in this kitchen has two screws that hold it to the door. You want to remove the entire hinge from the door and all of the screws that are holding it on there. We usually have two plastic bags, one for door screws and one for cabinet box screws. You will need these screws to put the doors back on, so do not lose them. Using a Sharpie, label each door with the box that it came from. Refer to the PDF document that came with this video for recommendations on how to keep track of which cabinets are which. The next step is to clean your cabinets very thoroughly. I essentially like to clean my cabinets twice. What I do first is spray the door down and clean it on the back and on the front thoroughly. Once I have finished wiping down the entire entire door front and back then I'll begin sanding the door knocking off all of the shininess from previous top coats and then I will clean the door again it does seem like you could just sand the door and then clean it and skip the first step of cleaning sometimes sanding a door that is greasy rubs all the dirt and grime into the wood so it's just best to clean sand, and then clean again to be on the safe side. So after you've done your first cleaning, you're going to start sanding. I like to use a medium grit sandpaper. Anywhere from a 120 to a 150 works great. You can also use a sanding block, but I have found that it's easier to just use my fingers so that I can get into the grooves. Also notice I'm going with the grain as I sand. This helps to eliminate scratches and brush strokes. Most cabinet doors have felt bumpers on the top and bottom. You'll want to make sure and sand off all of the residue left over from the adhesive. And until you get all of that off, because even though you're probably going to be putting another one on there, you want to get all of that residue and stickiness off so that your paint will bond to that area. By this time, you're getting really tired of sanding and you're only on the first door. But believe me, this is a very important step that I do not recommend skipping. You want to sand the front and the back. If you have an Orville sander and you feel confident using it, you're welcome to do that. I have just found that it's easier to just sand by hand and once you get going, it doesn't really take that long. I do recommend wearing all of the safety gear, such as a face mask, and goggles. It's also very helpful if you can do all of this outside. As you can see, I'm cleaning off my workspace with an old paintbrush. This is a great way to get all of the dust off of the door before you're ready to clean it again. I did not take the door down to raw wood. This isn't really necessary. All we're doing is scuffing up the top coat that is on the door so that we have something for our paint to bond to. You're done sanding, you're gonna clean everything front and back one more time. Where it's just, it's scuffed up. Okay, so once it's time to start painting, we're going to get a really good brush. The two inch angled brush, which has a little bit 
of a handle to it. It fits in your hand really well. And then I also have the Palm Pro, which is this one, the Palm Pro. And all of these are listed in the materials list. These are synthetic bristles, and I want you to think of like a makeup brush. This, this needs to be something soft because that's where you, you create your ability to take out the brush strokes. I know that there are a multitude of opinions on painting kitchen cabinets and the types of paint that you should use. I love General Finishes products. I love their milk paints, their gel stains, their top coats. Chalk paint is one of those that people say, oh, you can't use that because it's not gonna hold up. And then you have to wax it and, well, that's not true. You can put any top coat on a chalk style paint. You just need to prep your surface correctly. So after you have cleaned and sanded and cleaned again, then you're gonna prime your cabinets. General Finishes sells a fantastic primer. It's called Stain Blocker Primer. It is especially wonderful if you want to do a completely white kitchen cabinet. It's very durable. It bonds to almost anything. It's great to block out if you have cherry cabinets or a mahogany stain on your cabinets. It's great to block those tannins out. And it will take several coats, but that's sometimes the only way um, to do that. I personally would not recommend painting a dark cabinet in a white because there's no pigment in white paint. And that's gonna be, um, it's, it's just hard to cover. So for these cabinets, I'm going to be using chalk paint. I'm not going to be priming these cabinets because chalk paint serves as a primer. If you are using a milk paint or even a latex paint, you're going to want to prime first. The application will be exactly the same. I like to apply paint in the direction of the wood grain. I find that it gives a smoother finish and just a better overall look in the end. As you can see, I am smushing my brush into the grooves of the door. I want to make sure and get paint in every area. Once I get paint all over the back panel of the door, I'm going to lay it off to make sure that I minimize my brush strokes. Then, once I'm finished doing that, I'm going to make sure paint all of the edges with the grain from left to right and up and down. If I was to take my brush and not go left to right, it would definitely show brush strokes. Even if you apply your paint in the wrong direction, you can always go back and lay it off. This is key for having a smooth finish. Be sure not to get too much paint into the screw holes or into the hole where the hinge goes back and make sure you don't cover up the number or you won't know where to put the door. So when painting our cabinet bases, um, we're gonna do the same prep that we would with the doors. We're going to clean them really well. We're gonna lightly sand them and then we're gonna clean them again. Then we're gonna come back in with a primer. Painting that step is gonna be the exact same as painting this final coat of paint. So we just have our zebra brush. Now on this cabinet, I left the hinges on because I'm able to cut in around them. If you don't feel confident cutting in, go ahead and take the, the hinges off. It's not hard to put them back on. So once again, we're just painting the cabinet with our nice stroke of thin coat of paint. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, going with the grain. So the way the cabinet's built, there's wood here and then there's wood that goes from the bottom up. So I'm gonna do that same thing where I just lay it off. I'm also painting this inside of the cabinet because it just, it's gonna give you a much more finished look. And then same thing laying off right here. I'm gonna go ahead and get around this hand. Here's a close-up of us doing a different kitchen. 
obviously in white where we're cutting in the boxes. If you feel like you're not going to be able to do this without getting paint everywhere, go ahead and tape off your cabinets. You'll be glad you did in the long run. Go over here in this area. Just be really careful. Take your time. So just lay it off. I'm going to go ahead and finish doing all of these boxes and then we'll come back in and talk about what we're going to seal our cabinets with. So to seal these cabinets, I'm using General Finishes High Performance Satin. And I'm using the same brush that I painted with. This top coat is very durable and will last for years. I'm going to put two coats all over the drawers, boxes, and all of the doors that we previously painted. Be sure and read the back of the can of the top coat that you are using. It will have a recommended wait time between coats. Make sure and don't rush this step. It's very important that you allow your top coat to dry between coats. Once your top coat is dry, you can put your hardware back on. Make sure and be gentle with your cabinets for at least the first month. Cabinets need cure time, which usually is 25 to 30 days. They will be dry in a couple of hours. Cabinets being dry versus cabinets being cured is two entirely different things. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope it has been helpful in painting your cabinets. I would love to see your before and after photos. So you can tag me online on Instagram and Facebook or you can email them to me at beth at farmfreshvintagefinds.com. Dot com.